They struggle because they want to know that exact time. They want to know when exactly. If we could just put a date on it, we'd be able to be perfectly prepared, right? Well, I think it's intentional that Christ never did give an exact date. Not because He didn't know. Because certainly, well, His human side, you know, when we read His human side, certainly He didn't know. But as God, He knows exactly that time. And it's not because He didn't know. Because He does know. But the reason I, He didn't give us a time is because think about your life. Think about who you are as a sinner for just a moment. If you knew that Christ was coming, you knew the exact time and date, how much would you really prepare? Most of us, I think, are procrastinators. And we'd probably wait till you know, an hour or a day beforehand. But see, God is using this time in our lives to transform us. God is using this time that we don't know to work in our lives, to cultivate our lives. And sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's easy. But He's working through the events of our lives, the events of this world, to cultivate in us true faith in Him. And that's what, what, what fails when we start to focus on the things around us, the time that is now. When we start to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen today, what's going to happen next week, we start to worry about those things. We're not putting our entire faith in God. We start to worry about these things. We're violating His first commandment. And you might say, what do you mean? You shall have no other gods. But by worrying, we're focusing on what we do. We're focusing on how we are going to change our lives instead of on the truth that God can and does change our lives. There's a difficult balance of living in the now and living in the future. Knowing that Christ is coming again. Not dwelling so much on the worry, but also knowing that we can't stop living our lives in, in the, this each day and each moment. And if you, for a moment, look at our reading from Second Thessalonians chapter 3, you'll notice we have the polar opposite of the disciples here. The disciples were so focused, they were focused on the stones, and they were focused on what was happening in their day. On the other hand, we have the, the people of Thessalonica, who, well, Paul had come to them. He had preached the gospel that Christ was coming again. But instead of allowing God to continue to cultivate faith in them through their experiences in life, well, they quit their jobs. They stopped taking care of their families. They stopped doing what they needed to do to sustain life and just focused on that second coming. And the truth is, they weren't really focusing on what God desired. You notice that Paul's message to them, he, he who does not work shall not eat. And that's not just a broad statement. That was referring to those who had quit their job, who had stopped taking care of this day-to-day -day life. See, God has given us responsibilities today. God has given us families. He's given us loved ones to, to take care of. He's given us these lives. And He desires that we take care of them. He works through, through those events, through those relationships. And when we strictly focus on the end, when we strictly focus on His second coming, we lose sight of all, that he, all the ways He is blessing us now. So there's a balance. We have to focus on now what God has provided for us to do. How He has allowed us to live out our faith. But we also we focus on what is to come. We focus on the promises that God has laid before us. We focus on the truth that Christ is coming again. And believe it or not, it is going to be a scary time. I know as you read those verses, it's, oh, well, that was Old New Testament. That was 2,000 years ago. But we're more be beyond that. The thing is, when Christ comes again, He's not going to come lowly in a manger, riding on a foal of a donkey. Of, but He's going to come in all His power, dominion, and glory. It's going to be a scary time, but it shouldn't be for us as Christians. Because when Christ comes again, we are going to be brought up in His glory. We need not worry about His coming because He is coming for us as His children. 
When He comes again, He is going to sort the righteous from the unrighteous. The weeds from the wheat. He's going to sort the sheep from the goats. But those who believe and are baptized will be saved. When Christ comes again, our salvation has come unto us. We will be free from the pains of this life, the worries, the fears of this life, and brought up, brought up to God's kingdom which has no end. Woe to those who have turned their back on the gospel. Woe to those who have heard God's good news and rejected it. Because on that day, it will be a scary day. On that day, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say it will be the worst day of their lives. Those who have turned their back on the Gospel, who have rejected God, those who have not heard that forgiveness that comes through the Gospel, they are in danger of eternal punishment. It won't just be a one-day thing. Eternity has no end. And for us, for each of us, this should be at, at least a small encouragement to make sure those we know, those we care about, that they know the Lord. That they know His Gospel message. That they know that forgiveness comes through Christ, the Lamb of God. It's not going to be easy. Notice what Jesus said. Chapter 19. Chapter 15, he tells us they're going to hate you because of me. The people are going to hate, hate each of us for preaching the gospel. And we've already seen that in some ways in our world. But stand firm. Stand firm and you will inherit eternal life. Even in the worst times, God is there. And he is preparing us for that last day. He's preparing us for that time when we will join Him in heaven. Do not be afraid. Your salvation is near. Christ is coming to bring us home. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, there are times in our lives where we worry, where we become afraid where we doubt and distrust You. Forgive us for those times and reassure us. Help us to stand firm. Help us to stand firm in the face of all the things that are happening around us. Help us to stand firm as we face each day. Lord, send Your Holy Spirit that He may guide us, that He may direct us. Reassure us of Your love. Reassure us with the truth that because You have come, because You have entered into our world as a man, that You did come lowly, riding on the foal of a donkey. That You did die on a cross. That even now, but even with that, that You are coming again. Not lowly, not in weakness, but in power, in strength, and in glory. Lord, help us to long for those days of glory. Help us to see what You have set before us now. To share Your love, to share Your Gospel, to carry Your message. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen.